your Bibles with me to the book of Mark, chapter 2, and remain standing for the reading of the word. This is how we do it at Victory Outreach. Mark, chapter 2. And I want to read beginning in verse 1. We're going to read five verses. When you have it, say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It reads like this. And again he entered Capernaum after some days, and it was heard that he was in the house. And immediately many gathered together so that there was no longer room to receive them, not even near the door. And he preached the word to them. How many know it's talking about Jesus? He preached the word to them. And then they came to him bringing a paralytic who was carried by four men. And when they could not come near him because of the crowd, they uncovered the roof where he was. So when they had broken through, they let down the bed on which the paralytic was lying. Now look at verse 5. It says, when Jesus saw their faith. I want you to say this like you're full of this this morning. I want you to say it loud on the count of three. I want you to say faith. One, two, three. Faith. That's good. That's strong. It says, when he saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, son, your sins are forgiven you. This morning, just for the next few moments, I want to speak to you on the subject of having the spirit of the armor bearer. I mean, excuse me, having the spirit of the stretcher bearer. Wrong message. <laughs> having the spirit of the stretcher bearer. Give your neighbor a high five. You may be seated this morning. Someone say, Faith. Faith. Faith is the word that God has deposited in my heart for you in the beginning part of 2018. Because one thing I've learned in serving the Lord all these years is that faith makes things happen. Faith makes things happen. And this portion of scripture that I read to you, I've been very drawn to it lately. It just seems like I can't get away from the story of this man who was on the stretcher, who was lowered down into the house uh, by the four stretcher bearers. It's a powerful story. And it seems like no matter what I do, I, I just can't get away from the story. I think one of the reasons I'm so drawn to this scripture recently, because I spoke about this, excuse me, in November. And the reason I'm so drawn to it is because I see that happening in our church. I, I, I look at what's happening in this story, how the Bible says the, the house was packed out. And I think about our church and I can I can feel I get the feeling that the same spirit is alive here at Victor Outreach. How many could say amen? I've been very, very drawn to this scripture, not only because I can relate to it as a church, but I think it teaches us many great lessons about faith. And, and let me ask you a question. How many of you say, you know what, Pastor, it's important that I grow my faith? Yeah. Well, let me say this to you. It's not only important to grow faith, it's also important to grow determination. It's not only important to grow faith, but it's also very important to grow determination. Roy talked last week about everybody has a measure of faith, right? Yeah. And how many know we can grow our faith? But how many know that many times to grow your faith or to grow your capacity, as some people say, you must also be willing to grow your determination. Ooh, that's good stuff. Tell your neighbor, are you determined? We should be determined because of the climate that we find ourselves in spiritually. I want to tell you that we are, in a, we are in a season, we are in a climate where God wants to release great miracles in our midst. We, we're, we're in a climate for breakthrough. And, and I want to tell you as a church, if we are obedient to God, how many of you say, Pastor, I think we should be obedient to God. Yeah. And we desire to be obedient to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Then I want you to hear this statement that if we are obedient to God, many people will encounter God. Oh, man, you missed a big point. And if we are disobedient to the Lord, some people are going to miss God. So we've got to be obedient. Can I hear an amen? amen? See, when we declare jubilee and overflow over Victory Outreach San Diego and over the ministry of Victory Outreach, we were making a statement. Right. 
we're making a statement that this ministry got to the place it is today because there was a group of people who believed in the supernatural. There were a group of people that believed in the miraculous power of God, the power to deliver, the power to set free, the power to heal, the power to restore. Are we still that church today? Are you still believing for overflow? Do you still believe in a God that can send revival to your life? When we declared overflow and jubilee, we did it because we were birthed in miracles and we've been sustained in miracles. We were birthed by faith and we were sustained by great faith. Somebody say amen. amen. And we are here today because we still believe that faith makes things happen. Oh. Woo, this is good. That's why I got to tell you right now that if you're here, you need to make your next move your best move. That if you want to see great things happen in your life this year, you can't half step. That's right. <laughs> you can't half step. You, you got to take opportunity of the times we're in. You got to recognize that the wind of the spirit is blowing. You got to recognize that the rains of revival are being poured out in our mint. You got to recognize that we are standing underneath an open window blessing. I wish I had somebody that wants to receive this word this morning. We are under an open window blessing. The oil of heaven is being poured out. So I encourage you this morning to make your next move your best move. Step out by faith. Believe God for miracles. Believe God to be better than you've ever been. Believe God to break through into places you've never broken through before. Believe God for a new season. Believe God for a better marriage. Believe God for greater things. Come on, somebody. We are in a move of God. Tell your neighbor, step out. See, God's still looking for people who will believe him for the supernatural. I want to tell you that faith is not, you know, this easy believism. Faith is not simply coming to church on Sunday, hearing a message and walking out the same way you walked in. But how many know, according to James, he says, faith without works is what? You're going to have to work your faith. You're going to have to mix your faith with some action this year. It's not enough to say you do believe. Show me your life so that I can see how you believe. You've got to be willing to take what you believe and mix it with some action. Because when you take your faith and you mix it with some action, that's when the hand of God begins to move. When you take your faith and you mix it with action, that's when you move from dead works into miracle works. See, when it comes to miracles, it's not that we're waiting on God. It's that God is waiting on us. Imagine for a moment that God is looking down from heaven and he's saying, I want to bless you. He's looking down from heaven and, he, and he's saying, I want to deliver you, but you won't throw the needle in the trash. He's saying, I want to deliver you, but you won't throw the cigarettes in the trash. He's saying, I want to deliver you, but you won't stop going to the bar. Talk to me, somebody. This year, you're going to take your faith and you're going to mix it with some action and you're going to watch the hand of God move to deliver you. Come on, somebody shout in this you're going to get set free this year. Yes. It's going to take some action. That's why I tell you, make your next move your best move. This is good. Tell your neighbor, make your next move your best move. You know, stop telling your old lady you're going to be good to her. Actually start being good to her. <laughs> make your next move your best move. See, Faith gives us the courage to act. Faith gives us the courage to act. And Peter, he stepped out the boat. Didn't he? He stepped out the boat. Not every disciple stepped out the boat. But Peter, he, he got out that boat, didn't he? The 11 other disciples stood in the boat. They were scared. They, they were afraid. They didn't have the faith to step out. But how many know Peter, he stepped out by faith. That's right. Peter stepped out the boat. And, and for a moment in time, imagine, for a moment in time, he walked on the water. Think about that. For a moment, he walked on the water. For a moment, he, he, he walked on the waves. For a moment, he, 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 oh, this is good. Just think of your life. Just think of our life. Think of our life for a moment. Peter was out that boat, man. They're all in awe of him, checking him out. Their peer, their brother. You know, he wasn't no better than me. He just activated his faith. Yeah. 
And he got out the boat, and he was walking on that water. He was walking, and, and, I, and I really believe that he walked on the water because he had his eyes fixed on Jesus. Hey, 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 his faith got him out of the boat, but when he kept his eyes on Jesus, he was able to walk on the water. He was able to walk on the waves, and that's what I want to tell you. This year is going to be a year where you don't have to live under the circumstances any longer. You don't have to live under the feet any longer. The storm doesn't have to get the best of you. I believe each and every one of us can walk on the water. We can walk on the wave. We can walk a little bit higher. We can have some more victory in our life. Is there anyone here that believes that faith will cause you to do things that you never thought you could do on your own? Somebody say faith. faith. See, faith gives us the power to live above the waves. To live above the circumstances, to, to not only walk higher, but watch this. Faith helps us to take people higher with us. We, we can take people higher with us. It gets us into that miracle territory. Now, the gospel teaches this finally, that often the results of miracles are a how bad do you want it mentality. A how bad do you want it? You know, some people, they don't have miracles because they're not sick of being sick yet. They're not tired of being tired yet. But how many know it's totally entirely different when you get sick and tired of being sick and tired? And sometimes miracles flow out of an attitude. Tell your neighbor, you got to have an attitude. <laughs> and the attitude is a, 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 an attitude of how bad do you want it? Are you ready for change? Are you ready for the power of God to hit your life like it's never hit you before? Are you ready for some things to be released from heaven into your life this year? Then you, you, you've got to recognize that God has a way of rewarding the risk takers. God has a way of rewarding the risk takers and God has a way of blessing the out of the box thinkers. And I want to tell you, I'm tired of living in a box. Some of you know what it is to live in a box. You spent years in a box. Some of you spent years in prison. You were literally in a box. Yeah. But I came to tell you that God hasn't called us to live in the box. God has called us to break out of the box. We're going to break out of the box. We're going to break out by faith. We're going to step into God's best. Come on, somebody. He's got a plan for you. He's got a destiny for you. He's got a future for you. But you got to be like Peter. You got to step out of the boat this year. Woo! And when you step out, you're going to walk on water. You're going to walk on water. We need the spirit of the stretcher bearer. The story is powerful. And it's one of the most powerful stories in the gospel because of the fashion in which Jesus healed this man's sin and sickness. And what we find is that Jesus not only, you know, healed the man on the stretcher, as we read to verse 12, but he also rewarded the men who took the radical steps of faith of getting the man to Christ. See, there's a reward. And so what we need this year is we need the spirit of the stretcher bear. The spirit of the stretcher bear. And I want to teach you three things about faith out of their uh, about out of these men, out of their qualities. I think you'll take something home today. You getting blessed so far? Okay, write this down. Number 1, these men had a different spirit. We're talking about the spirit of the stretcher bear. And how many want to live by faith this year? Then, then you should see that they had a different spirit. They, now, now, when I say different spirit, I'm not talking about weird spirit. Because you got some people out there, even in here, you got a weird spirit. And that's not the spirit we want. But we're talking about a different spirit. We're talking about a spirit of faith. They had a different spirit. You say, how could you say it, Pastor? Well, when you study the story, you will find that these men had a different spirit than the other men in their city. They had a different spirit than the other men in their city. They had a different spirit. In an article called The Chaos of Capernaum, we can find that Jesus lived in Capernaum. That's where he lived. That's where Jesus' base was. It was in the city of Capernaum. It was an ocean town. And Jesus actually dwelt in Capernaum. Also, Peter, this was Peter's house. Peter also lived in Capernaum. 
But what you find about Capernaum, if you study it, is that Capernaum was not an easy place for Christ to work. In fact, it was one of those cities where miracles did not readily flow. Even though Jesus lived in the city, it was one of the three cities that Jesus actually cursed because of their lack of faith. He cursed Capernaum. He he began to say, because of your lack of faith, because you were not open to miracles, because you were unrepentant. Mm -hmm. That even though while I lived there, you were unrepentant. Man, this is heavy stuff. And so I want to tell you that in spite of all of the challenges of Capernaum, there was still a spiritual hunger in the city. There were still men and women with a different spirit. I feel this is so important to talk about today and so important to talk about even in the city of San Diego because sometimes we get caught up in this whole God is dead theory. That the age of the apostles has come to an end. That miracles no longer flow. That healing no longer flows. That preachers are all shady and all shysty. And we feed into what the media tells you about faith. And I think some of you need to turn off the tube and open up the Bible. Come on, somebody. Because even though the media has placed an attack on faith, how many know there always is a remnant of people who are still hungry for the things of God? And why is Victory Outreach San Diego Diego growing? Why? That even in a city of godless men and godless women, what the Bible says that the house was packed is because there was still a hunger in the city. There was still a hunger for a move of God in the city. There was still a hunger for miracles in the city. There's still a hunger for miracles. There was still, God still had a remnant of people that still believed that he could do miracles. I wonder if I'm in the right place this morning. If there's still a remnant of people in the city of San Diego that believe that miracles are still active, that angels are still moving, that people could still be healed, that drug addicts could still be delivered. Come on, somebody. They had a different spirit. They didn't let the spirit of the city control their faith. Woo, this is good stuff. The Bible says they heard Jesus was in the house. And the house was packed. And why was it packed? Because they were looking for the real thing. See, the news might say faith is dead. The media might say faith is dead. Everything you see in your family might say faith is dead. There might be friends at work that say faith is dead, but there is always going to be a remnant of people that are looking for the real thing. There's always going to be a remnant of people that really are looking for real deliverance and real freedom and real healing in their marriage and real miracles to begin to flow. There's always going to be a hunger, and, and, and the place was packed out because they heard that the real thing was in the house. Come on, somebody. The real thing was in the house, that Jesus was in the house. I've studied church growth for a lot of years. I've spent my life studying church growth. I've put in my 10,000 hours on church growth. And there's, there's two reasons why I believe people stay in church. Number one, and it's sad to say, it's not because of the preaching. People can get preaching and teaching anywhere. Nowadays, you can get teaching on YouTube. You can get it on podcasts. You can get it on, you know, you can get anywhere. People don't stay in church for preaching. But what you do find is that the number one reason people stay in church is because of an atmosphere of worship. An atmosphere of worship. People are hungry. Yeah, they're hungry for good teaching. They're hungry for the word. But you know what people really are hungry for? They're hungry for an atmosphere of faith. They're hungry to be around a group of people that can believe God for the supernatural. They're hungry to be in an environment. Everybody say environment. In in, in an environment. You say, what did you like about the church? They can't really tell you. All they know is that they felt good or they didn't feel good. And there's a lot of people that come to church. They they don't really even understand the preaching. They don't even understand what's being said. They don't understand the Christian lingo. But they could feel whether the real power of God is moving or not. 
They can feel whether there's a people who know how to worship God or not. And let me tell you something about worship and about praise. It's not the quality of your voice. It's the quality of your hearts. It's not the sound man that creates the atmosphere. It's not the good microphones that create the atmosphere. It's not even the musicians or the singers that create the atmosphere. What creates the atmosphere is a spirit of gratefulness. Am I teaching or preaching? Some of you I'm preaching, some of you I'm teaching. But it's the spirit of gratefulness. It's when a group of people know that it was only God that could deliver them. It was when a group of people know that it was only God that could save them. When it was a group of people that know that it was only God that could do the miracle. But they're not going to stay quiet about it. They're going to open up their mouth. They may not sing that well. They may have a horrible voice. But they're not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. They're not ashamed of the miracle working power of God. And they begin to sing to the Lord with a voice of triumph. They begin to lift up the Lord's name. They begin to magnify. Oh, come on. I'm going to give you an opportunity this morning to begin to lift up your voice. Because people are tired of religion. People are tired of religion. They're tired of checking in on Sunday morning and checking that out. They want to come to a house where the real power of God is moving. Where the real anointing that breaks the yoke of bondage is moving. They want to be around a group of people that know how to worship, that know how to magnify, that know, if you won't worship him, I'll worship him. If you won't praise him, I'll give him praise. Some of you need to praise the Lord right now. looking for the real thing. They're looking for the real thing. Turn me up in the monitor. They're looking for the real thing. Look at your neighbor and ask them, are you the real thing? Or are you a religious Christian? Are you a Sunday Christian? Or are you a worshiper? Do you know how to give God praise for his miracle power? Ain't nothing like the real thing, baby. Jesus is the real thing. Amen. Say it with me. Say, Jesus is the real thing. Second reason people stay in church is not only because of the atmosphere, but it's because of the people. It's not preaching. It's not screens. Oh, this is a nice screen. Hey, they got some stretcher bearers up there. But it's the atmosphere and it's the people. Someone say, it's me. me. They're tired of those prickly believers. They're tired of those porcupine Christians. You know those ones you hug and you leave with all their spines in you? They don't want those sandpaper people. Sandpaper people, sandpaper people are scaring people out of the house of the Lord. They're looking for real love. They're looking for real grace. They're looking for real mercy. They're looking for people that will really pray for you. That's why they stay. They're looking for real love. It's the real people with real faith, look at, who've been through some real problems. Yeah. They're tired of these churches where, where you know, everybody acts like they've got it all together. Yeah. <laughs> they get enough of that on social media. Yeah. <laughs> Is this too strong for you? No. They want to get into a church where there's some real people who've been through some real problems who have some real victory in their life. And because they got some real victory, they stayed real humble. They're not real better than everybody else. They know how to minister. They know how to love. They know how to ta help somebody out when they're down. Am I in the right church this morning? People fill the house because they're looking for the real thing. The real thing. And when we fill the house with Real worship and real love. That's when we see people stay and grow in the house of the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. You know, people are looking for growth, but more than that, they're looking for connection. Amen. I want you to look at someone around you and tell them, I want to connect with you. Come on, tell them, I want to connect with you. 
So the spirit of the armor bearer, number one, is they had a different spirit. Let me ask you, do you have a different spirit? The second thing we learn about their faith is that they also were desperate for a miracle. The Bible says that they couldn't get in the house and they were desperate for a miracle, but the, but the type of desperation they had was not a desperation for sex, but it was a desperation for a friend. It wasn't desperation for themselves. It was desperation for a friend. What had happened is that these men had heard the testimony of the leper. Now, if you read a little bit earlier in the scripture, you'll, you'll find that the first miracle that Jesus did in Capernaum is he healed the leper. And these lepers came to him. You know the story very well. But one of the lepers asked a critical question to Jesus. And he said, if you are willing, you can heal me. All I need to know is that you're willing. And the Bible says that Jesus looked at the leper. He said, I am willing. This is powerful for some of you that are sick. Have family members that are sick. Understand me. It's not only that God can heal. It's that he's willing to heal. He's willing to restore. And he said, I am willing. And the Bible says he received his, willing, his healing. And then Jesus said to the leper, don't tell anybody. But just like any old good victory outreach folk, y'all don't know how to keep your mouth shut. And the Bible says he went out and told everybody. He let them know there was a healer in the land. He let them know that miracles were flowing. He let them know that the real deal was in the house. And if you needed a healing, it was time to come get your healing. And if you needed a breakthrough, it was time to come get your breakthrough. And if you needed God to restore your family, this was the time. Victory Outreach San Diego, we are in the time where God wants to heal. So then flash forward to, to Peter's house packed out. But you have these friends who went and got a friend who was sick. They knew someone that was hurt. They said there's a healer in the land. There's miracles in the land. Capernaum's on the comeback. Come on, somebody. And they said, I don't need a miracle, but I have a friend that needs a miracle. And let me tell you, Probably for 70% of us, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for a friend. We wouldn't be here if it wasn't for a praying parent. We wouldn't be here if it wasn't for someone that when they heard that there was a healer, went out and got us. And how many know we ought to be grateful for that? We ought to be grateful that when they heard that Jesus was in the house... They didn't keep the blessing to themselves. But they said, I know a guy that's hooked on heroin. And I might even be a little bit hooked myself. I know an alcoholic. I know a broken marriage. I know a young person that's lost and lonely. And aren't you grateful that they didn't keep the blessing for themselves? Aren't you grateful that someone went and got you? They went into the crack house and pulled you out. They went to Tijuana. They crossed the border to go look for you and said, you don't belong in the nightclub. You don't belong in the strip club. You belong in the house of the Lord. Aren't you grateful they went and got you out of there? Wait a minute if you're grateful. See, where am I saying this to you? Why am I saying this to you? Because that's what the true Christian spirit is all about. The true Christian spirit is not to condemn people and to talk bad about people when they're down. And, to, you know, and, and I think sometimes we, you know, we, we do need criticism. We do need growth in our life. We do need correction. Can I hear an amen? But we've got to be a people of compassion. The true Christian spirit is to see the need. And feel the need, but then also to go out and meet the need. To go out there and let someone know that God hasn't forgotten them. To go out there and let someone know that no matter how bad they think they messed up, there's a healer in the land. There's a miracle worker in the land. That's the spirit of a Christian. That's what it's all about to be a Christian. 
This is what brought you and I to the Lord. How many can say amen? amen? Let me give you the final point. Did you get something this morning? Amen. Listen, the spirit of the stretcher bearer is not only that, number one, they had a different spirit. How many want to walk in a different spirit? Amen. Not only were they desperate for a miracle, desperate for change, but thirdly, and I think most importantly here, when we talk about faith, they were determined. They were determined. Look at your neighbor and ask them a question. Are you still determined? In Mark chapter 2, verse 4, we have it in the Amplified Version. Prayerfully, if they can put it up on the screen. In Mark chapter 2, verse 4, it says, When they were unable to get to him because of the crowd, it says, they removed the roof above Jesus, and when they had dug out an opening, someone say work. 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 Sometimes if you want a miracle, you're going to have to work to get it. So many people want everything for free. They got a government check mentality. But what this tells me is that if you want a miracle, you're going to have to dig some things out. Can I hear an Amen. When Jesus said, I'll give you the treasures out of darkness, he told us that for a reason, because you don't find treasure lying on the top. You got to dig for treasure. And he says, it says here, when they dug out an opening, they let down the mat on which the paralyzed man was lying. Continue. When Jesus saw their active faith, what did I say? You got to mix your faith with action. When Jesus saw their active faith, someone say faith. faith. Look at this, springing up from confidence in him. Remember Peter? Faith got him out the boat, but it was keeping his eyes on Jesus that kept him above water. Springing from the confidence in him, he said to the paralyzed man, son, your sins are forgiven. And then it goes on to say that he also healed and forgave the stretcher bearers. Why? Why? Because they were determined. And that's why I tell you this this year. How many want to see miracles? How many want to grow in your faith? Then, 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 then you have to grow in your determination. You, you have to grow in your determination. The word determined means having made a firm decision. Firm decision. And being resolved not to change it. That kind of feel like sometimes we don't get the blessing because we're always changing our minds. Especially our, my young people, my young adults who I love so much, but man, you frustrate me sometimes, you guys. But I love you, but oh, you drive me nuts. But I love you, but you drive me nuts. And I mean, you're making me have a split personality at this time. <laughs> but you know your problem is you change your mind too much. You, you need to make a decision and stick to it. You, you need to be determined that if the God who gave you the promise is the God that will bring the promise to pass. Come on, at least somebody help me. At least someone clap. Back me up, OGs. Someone say determined. Let me tell you this. Inspiration is not enough. If you want to grow your faith this year, as Matthew comes... You've got to move from inspiration to determination. If these four stretcher bearers moved in inspiration, they would have quit at the door. Just like some of you, when you try to come to church on Sunday and the parking lot is packed. Inspiration got you out the house. Got you to drive to the church. But when you saw it was packed, you said, forget it. I'm going to go eat breakfast. <laughs> How many want a miracle this year? How many want a miracle? How many want to see God's power in your life? Then, then you got to move from inspiration to determination. Determination got them on the roof. Inspiration got them to the house. But determination, some would say determination, got them on the roof. Listen, I, I want to tell you this, because I, I like to do coaching on Sundays with you. I've been serving God a while now. 
been through many trials. And, and one thing I've learned in, in these years, I know there's others here that could teach you this as well, is that in serving God and building my life, building my family, I've had to move in a spirit of determination. I've had to be determined. Not just to say I have faith. Not just to pray. Not just to read God's word. Not just to have a devotional life. I've had to rise up and be determined in many things. I've had to learn to be determined when I didn't feel dis inspired. I had to learn to do things that I don't necessarily like to do or come natural for me. Why? Because I have a plan and a promise that comes straight from the Lord. And if I want to see that come to pass, inspiration's not enough. I've got to rise up in a spirit of determination. I've got to rise up in a spirit of determination. Am I doing okay for you this morning? It takes great faith and determination to lead a family. It takes great faith and determination, listen, man, even to eat, lead your own life well. And the reason sometimes we don't even lead our own lives well is because we lack determination. We lack the spirit of determination that we need to take our life to the next level. Those of you who are trying to build your life, those of you that are trying to move into the supernatural, those of you that are trying to see greater things come to pass in your life, I want to tell you right now, God doesn't bless a quitter. Is this too hard? Can you give God praise? I feel like someone needs that today. God doesn't bless the quitter. But he will bless somebody that has the spirit of the stretcher bear that doesn't move in inspiration but moves in determination that no weapon formed against them shall prosper and greater is he that is in them than he that is in the world. Put your hand in your heart. Say, I am determined can't get away from this story it keeps coming back to me over and over again because it not only reminds me of, of building our life but it reminds me of the spirit of the early church that the holy ghost gave them a spirit of determination and that in the early church this was a church that could not be stopped say i am the church they could not be stopped because the Holy Spirit gave them a spirit of determination. And the in spirit of a determination, the spirit of the determined is the, an unstoppable spirit. The spirit of the determined is an unstoppable spirit, church. The spirit of the determined is an unstoppable spirit. And if we want to move to the next level, then we need an unstoppable spirit. We need a spirit of determination. We... The early church could not be stopped. There were four P's that could not stop the early church. Number one, people. People could not stop the early church. People could not stop the early church. I don't like her. People could not stop the early I don't like him. People could not stop the early church. They knew that the hand of God was on them and people could not stop them. Prison could not stop them. They threw them in prison. They didn't stop preaching. They threw them in prison. They didn't stop praying for the sick. They were in the hospital. They kept on believing God for the supernatural. People could not stop them. Prison could not stop them. Number three, persecution could not stop them. You could talk about me. You could come against me. You could hate me. You could make a voodoo doll and stick pins in me. But persecution cannot stop me. God is with me. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. I can't be stopped because I am determined. I am determined. Look at two people and tell them, I am determined. I'm determined to make this marriage work. I'm determined to see these kids saved. 
I'm determined to do the ministry. I'm determined to answer the call of God. I'm determined to build this business. I'm determined to serve God. I'm determined to stay in the house of the Lord. I'm determined to grow. Prison can't stop me. People can't stop me. Persecution can't stop me. And fourthly, problems can't stop me. Problems can't stop me. Doors might shut in my face, but there's always a roof I can break into. <laughs> Doors might shut in my face, but there's always a roof that I can break into. People may not like me, but there's always somebody that does. Come on, somebody. They might close the door on this job. doesn't matter. God has a better job. Problems can't stop. Does anybody want to give him praise that you have a determined heart, a determined spirit? Come on, you've got an unstoppable spirit. This is your year to be unstoppable. This is your year to be determined. This is your year to go to another level. Woo! Put your hand to your heart and say, I can't be stopped. And that's the faith we need in this time. I need you to have an unstoppable spirit. Okay? Can I talk to you? I need you. I don't know what's going to happen this year, but I need you to be unstoppable. What if I get sick, Pastor? I have to spend time in the hospital. Preach in the hospital. Preach in the hospital. Just say, I have an unstoppable spirit. What if they throw me in jail for old tickets? Preach while you're in jail. Pay your debt and then get out and get in the ministry. Can I hear an amen? But preach while you're in jail. What if my old man's mad at me? Keep on loving. Keep on serving him. Keep on loving your family. Can I hear an amen? I need you to have an unstoppable spirit. I need you to have an unstoppable spirit. I need you. God wants to bless you. God wants to open up the windows of heaven. But I need you to have an unstoppable spirit. place this year. Well, what if I get offended? I need you to have an unstoppable spirit. Well, if the usher doesn't greet me, I need you to have an unstoppable spirit. Well, I've been going to worship practice. They don't ever give me a microphone. I need you to have an unstoppable spirit. I've been going to Bible study. They haven't let me speak yet. I need you to have an unstoppable spirit. Your season is on its way. God is going to bless you. I need you to have an unstoppable spirit. Some of you are hard to preach to. You're not clapping for nothing, but I'll get you. Just a couple of you. I need you to have an unstoppable spirit. I need you to have an unstoppable spirit. How many say, I'm going to have an unstoppable spirit? How many could give God praise? Let's just pray. Let's go to praise in the Lord. Let, let, let's sing. Let's praise. Let's get a fast song. I want